Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue talking about the Synology DS220 Plus but more importantly I want to carry on with my Synology guides for 2020 and yes this NAS is the DS220 Plus but pretty much all of the steps in these guides apply to like 90% of Synology NASs currently available with DSM 6.2. Now today we're going to talk about surveillance. Now surveillance is something we talk about quite a lot and again this is the app we're going to be using today and for those that aren't aware to install the surveillance station app just find it on the app center and click install simple as that so while it installs surveillance station in the background i'm going to talk to you a little bit about what today's video is going to be about i'm going to set up surveillance station for the very first time on this synology nas i'm going to attach two cameras so i'm going to use both the camera licenses that this device arrives with and i'm going to show you guys about the recording area i'm going to show you guys about having zonal recordings and i'm going to show you guys about how to play back recordings while this app installs. So that's pretty much what we're doing today. It's worth highlighting that Surveillance Station is probably one of the best NAS surveillance apps out there. I know it's probably the best I've ever used. It's very intuitive, very user-friendly, takes advantage of things like pan, tilt, zoom, and take it, can take advantage of more professional and enterprise grade IP cameras in your surveillance environment that might have enhanced zoom or enhanced alerts and stuff built into them that are more AI powered. A number of those can be utilized by the Synology Surveillance Station application, but just make sure that you're using a device that is on the compatibility, compatibility lists. Although that's not the end of the world. A number of cameras, such as the Rio Link cameras we're gonna be utilizing to, for today's video, aren't on the, uh, the Synology compatibility lists directly, although they are ONVIV, O-N-V-I-F. That means that although they are IP cameras that can use cloud services, they can be accessed over the network. Uh, in the background there, as you may have gathered, I am still recording this remotely uh, uh, due to COVID and uh, self-isolation and stuff like that. And that automatically dates this video hugely. If you're watching this video in the future, good for you. I hope it all turned out okay. Um, but there may be the odd noise from stuff around my home, such as seagulls that frankly, I want to stove in with a hammer. But that's just my own petty frustrations bleeding out. Now, Surveillance Station is installing there in the background. The first thing it's gonna ask you to do is say if you want a customized login. That may be something that's a lot more uh, business um, orientated, but I'm gonna use the same default login for Surveillance Station as I am for this NAS. After that, it's gonna ask about confirming the settings of the installation, and then later on, it is gonna ask you about recording area and where you're going, you want your recordings to live. You can make sure that different individual users have got access, and while that installs a uh, surveillance station, I'll highlight that if you have multiple users on your NAS, and if you don't know how to create multiple users, do check out part two in my series of videos, um, but you can create individual users, and as you install more and more applications so let's go for an individual user. We'll go for one of the ones I created in a previous video. Let's go with Alan. You can go into the user groups, find the user, either create a brand new one or your existing ones, click edit, and from there, you can select what they've got access to. So for example, you can say where, which, I'm sorry, which folders they have access to. So if you want them to have surveillance recording access, make sure you tick there. On top of that, if you want them to have access to the surveillance station application, it will appear here. But as the app hasn't finished installing yet, it's not appeared yet. But when it does, simply scroll down like I'm gonna do here with video station, click tick, and there you go. That user now has access to both surveillance station and the recordings. You can set it up that they can only read recordings by going back into it and selecting the option for read only and that means they can look at the recordings but they can't delete them or download them which is very important i'm sure for a number of you so coming out of there we can go back to the installation there it should be done very very shortly it's quite a big application surveillance station um and today's video we are running on a couple of wd red 40 i'm sorry uh seagate iron wolf i should say um shr and btrfs equipped drives there so we're going to be going through that. Um, and the cameras we're utilizing are twofold. It's a C2 Pro from Reolink and an RLC, I uh, believe, 423. 
uh, that we've used in previous videos. We do have some upcoming Rio Link content coming soon with the newer generation of cameras, but we'll hold on for that. So the app is now fully installed and ready to go. You can either action it and open it from here, or you can head up and find it amongst the applications. There it is right there, and you can open it there. It will open in a brand new tab, and if you're already logged into the primary NAS and you didn't change the IP, it will log you directly in here. It will highlight what a number of these things here on the side are, and you'll see that during setup. You can cancel the help menu if you choose, and you can look at the user interface. Before we go any further, I'm just gonna highlight a few things here. First and foremost, you can install additional apps within the Surveillance Center application. There's lots of little security apps, security door, retail applications, and more. There's quite a lot there. Some of them are actually surprisingly cool. You've got live broadcast that allows you to get one of your IP cameras to do a live broadcast to an alternative audience. And you can link that with YouTube as well. So you can use YouTube to live stream from a camera, which can be quite useful if you're having a camera outside of a business and you're trying to do a big launch. On top of that, you've got things like IP speakers, a joystick controller if you're using third party peripherals. There are lots of different options, as well as how to download applications for your desktop, such as the surveillance station client and transaction management devices, where it will cross reference a lot of information for you to go through later. There's even the DS Cam and Live Cam app. With the, for iOS and Android with DS Cam, allowing you to monitor your cameras and the entire camera feed from your phone, and Live Cam, allowing you to use an old mobile or current mobile as an IP camera for surveillance. Lots of utilization there, and I've got a whole video on Live Cam already available. Just search Live Cam Synology Robbie or NAS Compares or something. Now, that's all the applications you can install. On top of that, you have Home Mode, which allows you to, with the utilization of the mobile app on your on a mobile phone, have the two devices linked. So consequently, you can have the app on your phone, and if it's on the same network as this camera, with home mode, the minute your phone connects to the network, the NAS will know that you're in the vicinity, and it will turn the cameras off. But if you walk away from your home or office and the camera, which is on that same wireless Wi-Fi network as the NAS, is then severed as you've gone too far from your house, if you've enabled home mode, that's when the cameras kick in. It's quite a cool little tool there, and I should really make it a dedicated video just on that. But let's start adding cameras. We need to go to the IP camera tab here, and it, we can start installing cameras. Now, we've got the add option there or we can just click the middle of the screen. We have two options, we're gonna go through both of them together. For the first camera, we're gonna go for a quick setup. Click next, and then click the spyglass. It will then search your local area network. As you see, the cameras haven't appeared, but under OnViv, both cameras have appeared. So we're gonna go for this first camera here, IP104. Double click, and then it will pull some of the information. Now you can, if you're using a supported camera, you can drop down and get lots of information and therefore a lot of configuration and control options from different camera brands. So it never hurts to try your luck to see if they're on there, but for now, I'm just gonna settle with just OnViv. Next, enter the information on this camera, which for me is the default just admin for now, and I've removed the password for this video, which I'll reestablish after the video. Test that the camera's working by clicking test connection and make sure that your login credentials are correct. On screen there will be the camera. And again, whether it shows my hand there, it won't yet because that's just a static picture. And then you can just click next. And now the camera's added. It's got basic information there and will let you know what the camera recording quality is in real time. If we go back and minimize this window a little, we can go back, we can switch to the live view which is a control deck where you can see all of your cameras. And if you've got a camera that supports pan, tilt, zoom, you can then use these options here to rotate the cameras. You can even use the arrows on screen to rotate the cameras as you see fit. And again, I'm only gonna do little subtle nods there. And if I move my chair back, there I am. Slight delay there. And definitely eating too many pies there, Andrews, too many pies. So. There's lots of things you can do there. You've got a whole control feed. You can set a, con a patrol pattern if you want. You can do alerts if it's a two-way audio camera. You can do lots there. If you've got um, a 3D EMAP 
of your facility. You can upload it here and then position on that camera, uh, on that map where cameras live. You can set customizable alerts and if there have been alerts triggered, they will appear there as well as management there which allows you to oversee all the individual alerts from all the different cameras. If we come out of there, we can start adding a second camera. Now if we go back to the IP camera tab, and this time we're going to add a new camera, but this time we're going to do the complete setup. Now, if we go to the complete setup, once again, we'll do the spyglass. We search under Omviv. It will find that other camera. 108. We'll have to rename it so they don't have the same name. Once again, I've already changed the password in advance. Test connection. It finds the camera click down and because we've selected the full setup tab now we can choose what is the recording codec we want to use if there's multiple supported the audio format we can choose streaming quality we can choose resolution there's lots of options open to us where we can increase or decrease the picture quality from that camera being recorded talking of recordings you can talk about if an alert is triggered, such as a movement alert or a light alert, how long do you want it to record before and after? That's right. You can set it to record up to um, so many seconds, 30, 60 seconds prior to the alert. So it's always recording, but it, for the alert, it will capture the beginning and the end of the alert and even before. You can keep recordings for a certain period of time so they can auto recycle as well as set alerts and limitations to the amount of data being utilized by your recording. You can even change where the data lives and the naming conventions too. Click next, you can now select when you want the camera to work. Right now it's set to continuous, but say you only want the camera to work um, when you're, you want it to be based on motion detection during the night. So you can set it up to be motion detection till say 8 a.m. and then after 6 p.m do only motion detection and then maybe during the day you want it to be on all the time but maybe not on weekends maybe on weekends you want it to be not on which would oh actually not on during the day while your staff are there so this routine you've just seen me draw out is the cameras are now on motion detection all weekend so if something triggers an alert they will then record they will be on continuous during the day on weekends and off during the middle of the day you can even do customizable ones in the background where you can set custom alerts too. Clicking next, that's the setup of that camera and now that camera is being added. So now we've got the two different cameras. Switching back to the live feed allows us to see both of these cameras. And again, if I scroll back, move back on my chair, put my hands up, there we go. And there you go, that is both cameras being set up. And once again, there's lots of things you can do. Say for example, this chair, we want to focus on that chair. We can set it up to closely examine what's in different shots. We've got the pan, tilt, zoom control, of course, as described. So we can move these cameras around quite easily. And then from there, there's lots more options all along here where you can do a separate stream if you want. So a certain area of the camera is dedicated to another whole screen here. And you can support multiple as well as snapshots and more. There's lots of different options open to you. So next, let's talk about alerts. We want to know what to do when something goes wrong. So now we're going to go back to this camera and we're going to edit here, edit that full camera. And from here, we're going to go to event detection. And from here is where we will set up what we want the camera to do in the event of something happening, be it motion, be it someone triggering alert. There are lots of options available to you. And it all depends what the settings are that your camera supports. So in this case, for example, you can choose whether you want it to be controlled by surveillance station or the camera. And that will differ depending on the camera you use. And then you can choose the detection area that the camera can notice. So for example, you can delete what they've got there and say that I only want alerts that happen in a certain preset area. So if we remove that, we select an area here and we say that we only want an alert when this area is triggered. So that means only motion in that box will trigger a notification to the user. Now, well, you have to make sure that you save these options as you go along. 
and you can optimize them in a number of ways as well. So there's lots of things you can do. If we click save, we've already done that. We can make our way back. Now we want to look at the timeline because the timeline is where the things that we've recorded will be displayed. Now, while I was talking there when I enabled the alert, I waved my arm in front of that camera. That has now triggered that alert there, where it has noticed that I moved in that field of view. This recording can then be downloaded. It can be watched via the window. You can go back to preset alerts if you choose, where you've got all of your alerts listed. There's lots of information. Now, there's lots more that can be done with Surveillance Station. This is a pure setup video. I will say that downloading the Synology client application for PC or Mac will give you a lot more that can be done in your home or business environment. A lot more than this simple tutorial can show you. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Do stay tuned for more guides on the 2020 series of Synology NAS. And if you've enjoyed this, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. And I'll see you next time.